Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here as a comparison between four top tier smartphones to see which one is the best of the best. While I can't compare every good phone that's out, I rounded up a few of the best, including the iPhone 5S, HTC One M8 Google Play Edition, Samsung Galaxy S5, and Moto X. To kick things off, we have the build quality. The Moto X has some interesting options like wood, however it's mostly made out of plastic. It doesn't feel all that bad, but there are some very obvious seams, and I was able to break my first Moto X without too much trouble. The Galaxy S5 takes a step forward, with a sturdier build and a ridged band that runs around the edge, holding things together nicely. Unfortunately, it's also got a little flex, but it's definitely an improvement over earlier Galaxy S phones. The HTC One M8 and iPhone 5S are on another level, however. Both are mostly made out of aluminum and feel absolutely rock solid in the hand, with no flex or give anywhere, so for the best build quality, it's a tie between the iPhone and One M8. Next, we have ergonomics, to see how each of these phones feel in the hand. While the all-metal build looks great, it also makes the HTC One a bit slippery, especially with the polished gray model. Put that together with being the biggest and heaviest phone here, and it can be a bit unwieldy to use. Even though it has a bigger screen, the Galaxy S5 is quite a bit lighter, which makes it easier to use with one hand. The back is also made of a grippy rubber material, which feels nice when holding it. Step over to the iPhone, and we're looking at a much smaller and more manageable device. You can easily reach the entire screen with one hand, and the chamfered edges make sure you can keep a good grip on it. Pick up the Moto X though, and it's like you found Goldilocks. It packs a much larger screen, and a frame barely bigger than the iPhone, and the back is almost perfectly shaped to fit in your hand, giving the Moto X the easy win in the ergonomics department. Now, let's take a look at the special features of each phone. With the One M8, you'll find a few things, like a micro SD card slot to expand your storage, along with a built-in IR blaster for controlling devices like TVs. The iPhone 5S is a pretty straightforward phone, as the big headlining feature is the Touch ID fingerprint scanner. It's not perfect, but it works pretty well, just needing you to rest your finger on the home button to unlock the device. The Moto X allows you to customize colors and materials using Moto Maker, which is an awesome feature. Even when the phone's off, you can say, OK Google Now, and it will immediately open up a voice search in Google Now. You also have the awesome active notifications, which will light a tiny part of the display to tell the time and show notifications when you pull it out of your pocket. Not to be outdone, Samsung loaded the Galaxy S5 with features including a micro SD card slot and IR blaster like the HTC One, along with the fingerprint scanner from the iPhone, although it's not quite up to the same level as it can be a bit hit or miss in actually working. It's also packing a heart rate sensor, which is a nice feature, and water sealing allowing you to take it for a dip without worrying, making the Galaxy S5 the clear winner when it comes to features. Next, we have the specs and responsiveness of each phone. Jump into the benchmarks with Geekbench 3, and you'll see the iPhone, Galaxy S5, and One M8 are all fairly closely matched, where the Moto X falls quite a bit behind. Move over to the graphics side with the Manhattan Test and GFX Bench, and again the results are fairly close, with the Moto X trailing the rest. While it's not bad by any stretch, the Moto X is let down a bit thanks to the older Snapdragon S4 Pro dual-core CPU. It's not a slow phone, but the UI can stutter sometimes, especially when multitasking. While the Galaxy S5 is packing some serious specs, it's also running Android with Samsung's TouchWiz UI. It's a lot better than it used to be, but there are still traces of hesitation here and there. On paper, the iPhone has a slow dual-core CPU and half as much RAM as the others, however the Apple A7 inside is no joke, and iOS 7.1 is very smooth and fluid. With the HTC One M8, especially the Google Play Edition, you're getting one impressively fast device no matter what you throw at it. For this one, it's a tie between the iPhone and HTC One for the most responsive device. Something that's easy to overlook is the audio performance. With one small speaker on back, the Galaxy S5 just doesn't sound impressive, especially when you consider a single finger can almost entirely drown out the sound. The iPhone moves the speaker over to the bottom, which helps things a bit, however we're still looking at an only average listening experience. While the speaker is around back on the Moto X, it's surprisingly decent. There's a nice volume and an actual bit of dynamic range, which makes things pretty solid. Move up to the HTC One though, and it's no contest. With a pair of excellent boom sound speakers up front pointing directly at you, the audio is much clearer and better sounding than any other phone out today, making the HTC One M8 the clear winner in the audio department. Moving on, let's take a look at the screens. While I like the 4.7 inch size of the Moto X display, the quality is a bit lacking. Even though it's 720p compared to 1080p on most flagships, the real problem is the lackluster color from the older AMOLED screen. 
The iPhone sports a much nicer looking LCD screen with solid color and brightness. However, it's a comparatively small 4 inches with a sub 720p resolution. Take a look at the 1080p displays on the HTC One and Galaxy S5 and you'll find some of the best screens on any phone out there. The Galaxy S5 is slightly bigger at 5.1 inches versus 5 inches on the One, however they're both vibrant, detailed, and have fantastic viewing angles. There are slight differences, but both screens look so good that this one is going to be a tie between the One and Galaxy S5. While this has a lot to do with your preference, next we have the software. While I might be running the latest Android 4.4 KitKat, the Galaxy S5 is also saddled with quite a bit of bloatware. You've got Samsung versions of most Google apps, along with plenty of carrier junk too. TouchWiz is much improved here, but I still find stock Android a better experience. While iOS 7 was a step back in a few areas, 7.1 fixes a lot of the minor problems, making it a solid, modern operating system. There are sore spots and disappointments like Siri, but the iPhone 5S is still a very easy to recommend platform. The Moto X is running nearly stock Android, which has gotten very, very good lately. There are a few small customizations, like the active notifications, along with Motorola apps like Assist, making it a great place to be overall. Move to the One M8 Google Play Edition, and we have pure stock Android KitKat. Paired with the excellent hardware powering it, this is the nicest Android experience I've ever used. However, you can also opt for the traditional HTC One, which comes with Sense and is surprisingly solid. For this one though, the One M8 Google Play Edition is the best of both worlds in the software department. Now let's take a look at the cameras. With 10 megapixels to work with, the Moto X sports a unique sensor, which is a bit disappointing. Get some great light and it can pull off a decent shot, but too often it completely misses the white balance and it can really smudge the details in low light. The HTC One isn't much better. While it's not bad at all in low light, get into normal shots and there's not a huge amount of dynamic range and colors tend to be a bit flat. You can use the depth sensor to get some decent shots sometimes, but for the most part it's not that useful. On the other hand, the camera on the Galaxy S5 is on an entirely different level. Having 16 megapixels to work with is a big plus, but more important than that is that the images you can capture are colorful and detailed with impressive depth of field. Throw in 4K video and it's a nearly unbeatable package. Nearly. On paper, the 8 megapixel camera on the iPhone doesn't seem too impressive, but it consistently pulls in excellent shots. Color is accurate, things are nice and sharp, and even low light isn't that bad. Something equally important is that it's incredibly fast at snapping pictures, which has helped me get shots that I otherwise might have missed. It's close, but in the camera department, the iPhone 5S is the winner. Moving on to arguably one of the most important smartphone features, we have battery life. While the iPhone is definitely well optimized to get the most out of a charge, the simple issue is that it just has a small battery. It gets through an average day, but for most longer days, taking an external battery is a must. The Moto X does a bit better, largely because it just has a bigger battery, but here again it doesn't have the longevity to get through some longer days. The Galaxy S5 is outfitted with a removable 2800mAh battery, which gives it impressive stamina, quite a bit more than the Moto X or iPhone. While it's incredibly close, I'd have to give the slight edge to the HTC One. Even though it's sporting a slightly smaller battery, the cleaner software of the Google Play Edition has less bloatware eating up your longevity, which gives the HTC One M8 the edge in battery. Last but definitely not least, we have price. Even though this does change sometimes, as of May 2014, there's really not much competition. The unlocked versions of both the Galaxy S5 and HTC One come in at a hefty $700 US, with the iPhone 5S at a still expensive $650. Compare that with the fully customizable Moto X, which is a much more reasonable $350 off contract, and the Moto X is the clear winner when price is concerned. So this has been a long video with a lot of info. What's the bottom line? If you're on a budget and want a solid phone that runs near stock Android with fantastic ergonomics, the Moto X is the clear choice. If you don't mind stepping up the price range, the Galaxy S5 delivers a solid overall package with a great screen, lots of features, and a really impressive camera. While the screen is tiny, the iPhone 5S is still a rock solid device with tons of power, a nice compact and lightweight form factor with fantastic build quality and an incredibly great camera. Even though each phone has perfectly valid reasons why you might want to pick it over the others, it wouldn't be a comparison without a winner, and for this one it's going to be the HTC One M8. With excellent build quality, a great screen, awesome speakers, and one of the best software experiences out there, the One M8 is hard to beat. The biggest weakness is the only decent camera, but when you put it all together, the HTC One M8 is a stellar package. So what do you guys think? Which phone would you go with? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I've got to give a big shout out to Dollar Shave Club for making this video possible. 
Buying razors sucks, right? You've got to go to the store, get the key to that plastic razor cabinet thing, and then shell out $20 for some ridiculous shave tech you don't even need. Luckily, there's a company that's doing away with all that ridiculousness. It's called Dollar Shave Club, and it couldn't be simpler. For a few bucks a month, Dollar Shave Club ships amazing razors and other bathroom stuff right to your door. Their blades are just as good as the big shave companies at a fraction of the price. They've also got Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter to make your shave even more buttery smooth. And you just gotta try One Wipe Charlie's, their new peppermint infused butt wipes for men. They tingle in a good way. Shave time, shave money. Join now at dollarshaveclub.com slash Austin. Again, that's dollarshaveclub.com slash Austin, so go check them out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.